Oh, fuck. I forgot I have to start my video the way I do every single one of my videos, which is like... <laughs> oh my god, hi! <laughs> you look so good today, you know what I mean? So I'll just like cut that out and like slap it at the beginning and that'll be that. So, want to hear something really fun? Um, I got about halfway through this makeup look thinking that my phone was filming and it just decided that it didn't really feel like it and it at some point in the process had just stopped and pretty much erased most of it. So what I have left is a very small chunk. Now, <laughs> Uh, if you've never watched this before, I'm supposed to be doing makeup while I talk about drag. The problem is that this is going to be very hard for me considering we're already here. And if I wanted to, I guess I could just like erase everything, like wipe it off my face and start again. But I don't feel like doing that because I love what's happening on my eyes right now. So we're just going to kind of continue with this and I'm going to add some glitter and highlighter and stuff and lips while we talk about today's thing. This episode was very fun. I actually thought that they did a good idea with the challenge. It was very different. It was just a normal acting challenge, but I thought it was a fun concept to do. Um, so the episode starts out with everyone going into the workroom and finally meeting up together and Elliot surprising the girls. And I don't know if this was maybe planned, I'm not sure, but I can say that it was incredibly hilarious watching the girls realize what was happening in real time. I don't think that any of the girls had been primed or told how to react because it seemed very genuine, especially to Misha, who always makes me laugh. So they skip the mini challenge this week and they go right into the main challenge. So this week's challenge, they're doing a parody of a Hallmark movie. So each of the girls teams, cause there's three teams, they each do a parody of a Hallmark movie, but specifically like random holidays. There's Flag Day, which I did not know was a real American holiday. There is Valentine's Day and April Fool's Day. And the teams are as follows. There is Kamora Hall, Olivia Lux, Denali, and Elliot in the Valentine's Day one, Lala Ree, Rose, Simone, and Utica in God Loves Flags, which is like the Flag Day one. And finally, there's Got Mick, Joey J, Candy Muse, Tamisha Iman, and Tina Burner in the last one, which is the April Fool's one. This week, the energy in the room is super chaotic. As the girls are getting ready to do their performances, going out onto the stage or whatever, they're doing this thing as they're getting ready and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's very high school musical energy or something, like they're all auditioning for high school musicals. And what I find very funny about it though, is that they're just doing their thing, they're practicing, and then there's Tina Burner in the center of the room, overacting, she's standing up straight with her script in her hand, and she's, she's talking like this, just overacting. And then Rosé sees her and goes, oh my God, I gotta get in there. So then she stands up and she squats down, got her finger like this, and she's doing her own ridiculous overacting. In the actual challenge, the girls are doing a, decent enough job. Like I said, Tina Burner's overacting as is Rosé. And I do feel like in acting challenges on Drag Race, you kind of have to overact. It's kind of required. They're not looking for, I don't know, Oscar worthy interpretations of characters. They want you to be loud and funny. And if you know how to do share impressions, even better, you know? Um, Speaking of, Tamisha Iman is having a bit of trouble getting there with a Cher impersonation. She's doing her best. La Larie is also not doing very well. It's not so much that she doesn't know her lines or she's not trying, it's that she's not overacting and she's not exactly underacting, she's just acting the way someone would on like a TV show or whatever. So she is having trouble because people are watching her next to all these people screaming and yelling and all this stuff. So she's coming across as very minimal, very small. Utica's also struggling a little bit. She doesn't know her lines as well initially. She kind of forgets them, but she gets there easily enough. And Denali is not doing well at all. Uh, not at all. I don't even know what her issue is. She's not necessarily underacting, but selling the performance. She's also not forgetting her lines necessarily. It's like she just didn't know how to act and she never had. And she she won't pretend that she knew how to act because she that was not her. So 
Kimura Hall is having some trouble. She's playing a literal tree and she's got this green screened in the challenge. Like once I show the video that they're filming, she's got this green screened head that's just floating and it's like they can't keep the tracking right. She's kind of like floating all over the screen, not in a solid spot, which is already very like, it's a, like, you know when they take like memes of like Shrek's head and it's like someone amateur who doesn't really know what they're doing editing wise. It was very that, um, really got me laughing. But so she's there filming, they're trying their best and she's got this line that's based off of Tyra Banks. Like I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? And she's having so much trouble. She's just trying to get through it. And she keeps saying, I was rooting for you. No, no, no. <laughs> she keeps saying I was rooting for us, but she's saying it like I was rooting for us. And Ross Matthews is like, no, no, no. I was rooting for us. And she just can't quite get it. And it's getting to the point where they're like, well, we're going to have to like give up, you know, like we can't keep doing this. And they don't end up getting a take where that looks, where it works. They end up having to just kind of get what they get. So back in the workroom, the girls are getting ready for their runway. And this week's runway is trains. So they are prepping, they're getting ready for the runway and they managed to once again mention that Tamisha has three kids. She says that she came out as gay in her 20s. She didn't know that she was, and she had a friend to kind of help her through the process. And I absolutely, not only, I say I believe that. And I think it's lovely that she says that she named herself Tamisha. She named her drag character Tamisha, at least, um, after her child. And I think that's either her oldest or her youngest. I'm not sure which. Um, and that her oldest is like 30. Um, now let's move on to the runways. So this week on the runway, the theme is trains, like I said before, starting off with... So Janali this week comes out dressed as a parrot. And she's got this long parrot feather train and it looks pretty good she's doing it justice she looks really nice and she's having some fun on the runway her hair looks really nice it's like this big parrot color mohawk i thought it was nice i didn't think it like necessarily matched up with some of the other girls because some of the other girls had an incredible look um speaking of Olivia Lux looks really good on the runway this week. She's got a Baroque French style outfit. It's very like, she says rock me Amadeus. It's very that. She even down to like the shoes, which are those like French aristocracy shoes. And she has a nice cool, gorgeous train. It's like almost a muted like periwinkle, like blue. It's bedazzled. She just looks so good this week. Like amazing, amazing this week. And then Elliot comes out and Elliot looks okay. It's a white lace bodysuit with a train coming down the back. It's fine. It's not bad. It's just not quite my favorite. And the wig is a sort of, I think she says it's Glenn Close. It is kind of Glenn Closey. It's just a blonde wig. It's a very short wig. Not bad, like it looks fine, it's just not my favorite. Kimora Hall is next and Kimora looks really pretty. She's wearing this uh, sort of a pale gold skin tight gown on the shoulders. There is a like, there are dragon heads and then her tail or her, her train is a dragon tail. It looked very regal, it looked elegant. Um, definitely could have come across campier than it was. I just think it was a beautiful dress. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it was specifically like a nod to her heritage or anything. Um, it definitely kind of came across that way, but it was still very beautiful. Speaking of nods to heritage, Simone's look this week was incredible. So she's wearing this blue tracksuit that's kind of open. There's a peak of like, a, I don't know, corset, like a pattern corset underneath. But the best part about this look, she has a do-rag and the do-rag's train is incredibly long down past her. It's so creative, so smart. I love that she is taking something that I feel like is this negative stereotype of people of color, very specifically black people, and turning it into something so smart, so elegant, 
and really wearing it with pride. Now, I am a white person and I don't have a heritage, you know? My heritage is literally nothing. But I just really appreciate that she did something so smart and so thoughtful on the runway. And I, I think it really made her stand out. Simone is very quickly for me becoming someone who I think, I hope, I really hope that Simone wins, I'm not gonna lie. If not her got Mick, but let's be real. Simone is just doing some incredible stuff. Um, after Simone though, comes Lala Ri, and she looks fine. She's in like an animal print, I think, dress. Um, and she's got, she's not wearing a wig this week. She's got this like skin tight, like a scuba dress, like a, what do you call that? Like, like a scuba, a balaclava or whatever. It's like a thing that covers everything except for the eyes. And so it's like kind of like a fashion forward, almost face mask message, which I did find kind of smart, but I, I don't know. It was just very simple. She didn't look bad or anything. It just wasn't necessarily my favorite. So then Utica comes out and she's dressed like a curtain. Like it's a full dress, very, uh, she's got like a bell hoop skirt thing. And across the shoulders is a like curtain, like a shower curtain or I guess like a window curtain bar. It's just very smart, very simple. And it looked really good. And then Rose is wearing this blue pantsuit in the front. It's a very simple woman's blue pantsuit. And then her back, she's got this very ruffled thing and it's like covering the backside from like neck all the way down into a train. There wasn't anything super wrong with it. It just was kind of boring. Got Mick is wrapped in a pink and blue chiffon. They're like strips of fabric that kind of come off the back into a train. Her look this week was very simple, but I did like it. I actually really enjoyed how, I don't know, what, do we, what can I even say about it? I just thought it was nice. I thought it was really good. I enjoyed how it looked. Very fun. So then Tina Burner comes out and she said that she was a train conductor, but for some reason when I saw her, I just literally was like, oh, a bellhop, right? Like that's a bellhop. It was not a bellhop. I don't know why I thought that it was, but she was not a bellhop. And it looked good. It looked very kind of cartoonish and poppy and like almost a, a stage costume or something I'm not sure but it looked good um and then after her Joey J was wearing a wig and her outfit was very strange my boyfriend actually commented because I didn't really realize I was in the middle of watching it and he was at his computer and she came out as you guys probably know she had that weird coat that had the skirt on which looked fine like it looked interesting I guess and then she turned around and her train was a mouth with a tongue with a piercing on it and I literally I guess I unknowingly went wow and he went so it's not good huh and I went no I that's just how it is and he went you sound both impressed and annoyed at it and I was like yeah candy muse very burlesque very sexy I really liked it um did need some polishing I think just to make it that extra mile but I thought it was really great I really liked it and then Tamisha she was serving bright so pink it was blowing out the color balance on my tv it was a pink pantsuit and it had sort of a frilly sheer train my opinion on the sketches the they were all kind of bad I don't know they're never good the videos are always bad the valentine's day one was okay I guess there were funny moments, I suppose, with certain people. The whole tree thing with Kimora Hall made me laugh a little bit because they just kind of let it happen. Um, and I will forever have, I was rooting for us in my head and that will just never leave. Jeffrey Warrior Chapman is also in every single one of them and I saw him and I went, oh, Okay, because RuPaul loves Jeffrey Boyer Chapman. I don't really have much of an opinion on Jeffrey. I think people are a little too hard on him, but does my opinion matter? No. <laughs> the April Fool's Day one was pretty funny too, and Candy Muse did a really good job. She, they edited her very well. She was very funny, maybe slightly hard to understand, but nothing too crazy. And I just found her very amusing. The way she was reading her lines was very good. And then the Flag Day one was also very good. Again, I don't know what else I can really say beyond some performances were good, some were bad. So let's find out who's, Who's in the top? Who's safe? So the people getting judging, AKA the people that aren't safe, 
Denali, Kimora, Simone, Lala Re, Rose, Candy. They were all good or bad. I mean, y'all know the show. So with Simone, they love her outfit and they loved her performance. They thought it was very funny and enlightening. And it was, it was really good. She, the great thing about her, she didn't necessarily super overact, but she also didn't underact. She just kind of knew the strengths of her performance, but didn't try to go so far over the top with it. And because of that, she really stole the show. Um, Kimora, they like the outfit, but she's still getting the edit where they're like, you're boring. You don't have a personality. Denali, they do like the outfit. They didn't like her performance. They couldn't tell you what was wrong with it, but they didn't like it. Rose, they think the outfit was fine, but they liked her performance a lot. They thought it was funny, you know? La La Ree, they liked her outfit, but not the performance. Candy, they didn't like her outfit, but they loved her performance. Um, it's not that they didn't like the outfit specifically, they thought it was sloppy execution. You could apparently see her cincher a little bit and it just wasn't as good as Michelle Visage wanted. But in general, I don't think anyone had a dud this episode on the runway. I thought it was really good. Everyone looked really nice. Um, so this week, the winner is Simone. So the bottom two is Denali and Kamora Hall. And they are lip syncing. I don't remember the song. I, I don't even really recognize it. It was a good song though. Um, and Denali is selling it. She's going incredibly hard, harder than I've ever seen a person lip sync. And <laughs> Kamora is walking around and looking pretty. What I find to be very funny is that by the end of the lip sync, not a single person was even rooting for Kamora. They were all living for Denali and watching her lip sync. And at the end of the lip sync, Rue did not wait a single second. As soon as the song was over, Rue was like, Denali, that was great, Shantae, you stay. Like not a single moment. It was like she knew that the people watching at home would not in any way be surprised. And like, let's be real, we all knew Denali was gonna win halfway through that lip sync, so what's the point in like the suspense, you know? I have this mini of like an Anastasia matte lip in Mai Tai. Let's put it over top. I mean, the worst that happens is it looks terrible and I hate it, you know? <laughs> this video today was weird because I got halfway through my makeup and only then realized that I had messed up and the phone stopped filming. So I'm really sorry if this week's was kind of weird and out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm really sorry if this week's episode is kind of strange. I tried my best to kind of salvage it where I could. So I guess this week's episode was talking about Drag Race while I put glitter on and lipstick and highlighter, I don't know. <laughs> I did, I did my best to salvage this. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Drag Race. I did. If you are interested in watching me do my face from beginning to end, um, I have several videos you can check out on my channel of me just doing makeup while talking about Drag Race. I promise that next week I will be doing actual drag makeup again. This week I had a migraine, which you would have known initially had my phone not gotten rid of half of the things that I filmed. Um, regardless, I really hope you at least enjoyed this random video. I put out new videos every Friday and Sunday while Drag Race is airing. And those Sunday videos, I just kind of talk about my opinion on Drag Race and have some fun and do makeup. Um, so if you're interested in makeup or rants or I don't know, whatever. Hi. Hey. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all later. Bye.